Hey everyone, my name is Alex and welcome to another Civilization 6 video. Now today we are going to be finally resuming our look at the secret societies. I've been working on this video on and off for a long time. It was meant to go out so long ago, but I've only just got round to it. And we're going to be looking at the Void Singers. Now, one thing I want to say is that playing as the Void Singers kind of took me out of my comfort zone a little bit because what I really focused my time playing Civ on is domination and science so the culture and religious aspects of this secret society actually taught me a thing or two and really did um, kind of get me more comfortable in playing those types of games more frequently but what that does mean is that I'm going to be able to probably teach the average player something in this video but what I also think is that if you've played the Void Singers before you will ma you might have noticed things and learned things which I did do not pick up in this video so do make sure if you have anything to add you let me know down in the comments i think that'd be useful for me be useful for other people and, and hopefully in this video and in the comments we can therefore kind of teach people lots of cool stuff but yeah let's dive in to their initiation bonus okay so yeah let's kick off the analysis and tip stuff with the initiation bonus and the way to actually find the void singers and get this initiation bonus is to discover a tribal village and that will give you 70 percent a 70 percent chance of actually discovering the secret society so maybe you'll have to find a couple of tribal villages to, to certainly find it but you know 70 percent chance is pretty good so the initiation bonus allows you to construct the old god obelisk building and this is a replacement for the monument and offers the same bonus to loyalty and culture that the monument does but on top of this the old god obelisk also gives plus four faith and plus one slot for great works of any type and this is a bonus which is going to be useful to you not just in the early game but also as the game progresses so what we'll do now is kind of split this up into two parts so first up the plus four faith is really really useful especially early on in the game when you're going to want to build as many of these things as you possibly can like one thing that you might want to consider is if you play as Rome you will get one of these free in pretty much every city but Rome so um, that would be quite useful to you but the reason you want to get these out as fast as you can is that plus four faith in the early game is obviously quite quite a big deal and you can use it to gain access to the best pantheons before other civs grab them now the reason i make this point first is because i really do rate the pantheons and i think that getting the best pantheons will really help your civilization not just in the short run but that little bonus really kind of kicks you on and gives you an advantage for quite a while so i always think the first pantheons are, are something to prioritize and try to get to especially if you're kind of planning on playing a religious game there's lots of other ways that faith is important as well so obviously if you're going for a religious victory this bonus will be very useful for spreading your religion you know for recruiting the missionaries for recruiting the apostles which are going to allow you to do that but faith can also be useful to do things like patronize great people um, and that's obviously useful for kind of getting the great people that you really want in any area and also for if you need a great person for some era score so you avoid a dark age something like that it can also be useful um, for that but there's lots of ways that faith is important and obviously getting plus four faith from every single um, obelisk especially in the early game is going to be noticeable for you if you use your faith to patronize great writers artists or musicians then one obvious element of gameplay great people are pivotal for is culture and this ties in nicely with the second part of the old god obelisk bonus and that is the plus one slot for great works of any type and this helps greatly with housing great works and supporting your attempts at a cultural slash tourism victory so the additional great work slot will also house relics too which is not just great when going for a culture victory like usual great work slots are i mean relics offer a tourism but also it's useful for going for a religious victory with the plus four faith relics provide as well and later on in the game you'll unlock the relics of the void which is sort of i think even stronger than that but there are obviously concerns with going for a cultural victory with religious tourism and things like that so we are going to return to this point a little bit later on but what you need to know is that the old god obelisk is basically a great monument replacement especially if you want to go for either a tourism or a religious victory so i recommend building one in pretty much every single city 
Moving on, the Ritual bonus is unlocked just by reaching the Medieval Era. And this is pretty much the exact same for every single secret society. The Initiation bonus requires you to do something, like in this case, discover a tribal village. But beyond that, you literally just unlock the bonuses by reaching um, a certain era. So this Ritual bonus for um, the Void Singers means that cities earn gold, culture and science per turn equal to 20% of their faith per turn. Now what I really like about this bonus is that it addresses the big problem which usually comes when you focus your civilization towards a religious victory, that of literally falling behind in every single thing else, like science, culture, you're usually kind of neglecting that because you're putting a ton of your production in the early game to holy sites and things like that. Now don't get me wrong, you're still going to have to allocate resources to improving your science and commercial hopes and all that good stuff particularly on the higher difficulties where the bonus faith you'll get will probably not be anywhere near enough but it does help you keep up and it does maybe mean that you can spend more time producing faith and a little bit less time making sure you don't fall too behind with other things now as a side tip this bonus is particularly useful with Ethiopia for pretty much two reasons. So firstly, Ethiopia gets bonus faith for improved resource tiles, trade routes and their unique improvement which is the rock hewn church, meaning your faith production will be even bigger and if you have bigger faith production, obviously you're going to have then bigger yields for everything else because it gives you 20% of your faith per turn in science and culture and gold. And secondly, Menelik's leader ability gives cities founded on hills a science and culture bonus equal to 15% of their faith output anyway. So if you're playing as Ethiopia and you can found your cities on hills, when playing as the Void Singers, you're going to be able to produce quite a lot of science and culture, especially just through these bonuses. So if you reach the industrial era, you will get the indoctrination bonus. And what that is, is very exciting for this secret society because it allows you to unlock the cultist unit, which I've had a ton of fun playing with. And for me, it's definitely the highlight of this secret society. So this unit is purchased with faith and uses charges to reduce loyalty in foreign cities and generate relics of the void. So firstly, what I want to say is that I think these have three charges each which take 10 loyalty from every city where they are used on. And the relics of the void are generated, I think, sometimes when um, you kind of use all your charges and, and the cultist unit dies, which is very, very sad. But anyway, the example I want to give for this is the game I was playing as Eleanor of Aquitaine with this secret society because Eleanor is very, very strong with this bonus. And that stems from the fact that when her culture or whatever flips a city it doesn't go to a free city first it flips straight to Eleanor so this is pretty much back to basic um, city flipping with Eleanor of Aquitaine and obviously with a unit that reduces loyalty you can imagine that that is very strong now though I was playing on a lower difficulty to see just how powerful um, these secret societies can be I do it for literally every single secret society I like play on king or something something which is going to be easy where I'm not going to be pushed just so I can focus on really exploiting and experimenting with things. I managed to use Eleanor of Aquitaine and a lot of loyalty modifiers to completely flip pretty much the whole of Gaul. So what I did was Gaul invaded me because we were kind of having a bit of a religious standoff and don't think they enjoyed it too much because they were losing. So what they did is they kind of declared war on me to try and push my religion back or whatever and I won the war. So in the peace treaty, I took away all their luxury resources as a priority because I knew if I took away their luxury resources, then their people would be unhappy. What I did after that was I voted on something in the World Congress. I used a load of my diplomatic favor to give them extra city growth, but the kind of counter to that is they lost five loyalty per city and a few more loyalty modifiers, maybe like using Amani. And what I managed to do was get them to a stage where they were losing loyalty or one or two cities were losing loyalty. Um, so that's when I brought the cultist units in. And I'm telling you now, if you have a lot of faith and can purchase a lot of these things, they can flip cities very, very quickly because they all take 10 loyalty per turn. So if you kind of activate them, they take away 10 loyalty. You've got three, four, five of these around a the city. You will reduce a city's loyalty very quickly. And it's pretty much, you don't have to wait 40 turns for it to rebel. You can pretty much do it instantly. So if you can get 
enemy cities losing loyalty, the cultist unit is very, very quick. And what I've noticed with loyalty in Civilization 6 is that if one city flips of a civilization, if one city rebels and becomes a free city, then multiple probably will. And it is kind of a snowball effect, especially with Eleanor of Aquitaine, because that city joins you straight away and then you're on to the next one. You're trying to disrupt um, your opponents, trying to disrupt their cities. And as I said, I managed through the peace treaty, which took away all their luxury resources, which was important, but through other ways as well, to just cripple them. And they absolutely fell to pieces and I used this unit to flip a whole sieve. Now, on the higher difficulties, obviously that is not gonna be so easy, but I do think that if you win a war, and are playing as this secret society, taking away luxury resources is probably something you should prioritize because you never know, you could end up flipping a load of cities to you and that is that is obviously a massive bonus. So moving on, Relics of the Void give bonus faith and tourism and they're basically created by using as many cultist units as you can and once they've used all their charges, um, sometimes you seem to get Relics of the Void. So they give bonus faith and tourism. So regarding the faith, I just, it's not a revolutionary amount of bonus faith you will get from this, but any amount of faith in your pursuit of a religious victory is very, very useful. You know, you need faith to, to purchase the apostles, the missionaries, etc. to really push your religious victory. So bonus faith is always good and tourism is good as well. Now, what I noticed in my game was that I was getting quite a significant amount of tourism from Relics of the Void. So if you want to go for a tourism victory, generating these is pretty good. And what's also good about it is that the old God of Wish, remember we, we talked about that earlier on in the video, it gives a free great work slot of any type. So they can become really in useful once you get these Relics of the Void. So make sure you're building as many of them as possible. One thing I do wanna mention, and this is what I was alluding to earlier, is that a lot of the tourism you're producing here as um, as the Void Singers and as kind of if you're playing this game is religious tourism. And one of the problems with religious tourism as you progress through the game is that when other civilizations research the Enlightenment Civic, it significantly reduces the impact of religious tourism. So one thing I would really recommend doing if you want to make the most of religious tourism, and especially if that's going to go on beyond when other civs get the enlightenment civic, is that you try your very best to build Christ the Redeemer. Because what Christ the Redeemer does in Civ 6, or the Christo Redentor, is it reduces the, it counters the effect, sorry, of the enlightenment civic. So you will carry on producing that significant amount of religious tourism and obviously that could be a big part of how you're going to win a tourism victory. The final bonus is the master plan bonus and this is unlocked by reaching the atomic era. So what happens here is it unlocks dark summoning, a city project that provides lots of faithful active and upon completion raises the amount of loyalty damage done by cultists. Now with pretty much every single um, of these master plan bonuses we've looked at so far, they are a win more bonus. Now, you should already be producing a ton of faith as the Void Singers. You should be well on your way to a religious victory. So I don't think either of these things are game changing because as I just said, although it does allow you to produce extra faith, which will be good. You know, if you need to produce that faith, it will be good. I think there's a good chance that most players will be well on their way to a religious victory by this point. Um, and the additional loyalty damage done by cultists I think it's good but ultimately if you've got lots of faith anyway you can just purchase lots of cultists and and I'm not really sure how much difference it would sort of make but it, to me it's a win more but you know you'll never turn down um, extra advantages and it's no weaker than the master plan bonus we've seen for the other two secret societies we've reviewed. Before we quickly summarize, one final thing I want to do is give some additional tips. Now, I've already gave quite a few tips throughout this video. Maybe you didn't notice them, but you know, playing as Ethiopia, playing as Rome, or playing as Eleanor of Aquitaine, stuff like that. But there's two specific tips I kind of want to either recap or emphasize to you that didn't really fit in a point. So firstly, though you don't necessarily need to go for a religious victory, 
I do think having a religion will help you increase your faith and possibly even other yields too through your ability to select beliefs. So I think you should 100% get a religion with the secret society. It's also a lot more fun to play with a religion as the secret society. So definitely make sure you try that out. And I, I would be going for a religion. And secondly, and this overlaps pretty much the whole theme of this civilization. Um, sorry, as of the secret society. And that's that faith and culture overlap a lot. And that's a thing in Civ 6 anyway, faith and culture definitely do work together. But in the secret society, to win a victory with either, it makes sense to embrace both. So make sure you're working on your culture, make sure you're working on your faith. And I think that if you end up going for a culture or religious victory, it will help you regardless. So overall, this secret society, the Void Singers, I had quite a lot of fun with. I think the cultist unit, especially when playing as Elder of Aquitaine, was the highlight for me. It was just fun to conquer a civilization in another way, but ultimately, it's, it's a pretty decent secret society. What do you think, though? I'd love to know what you thought of this video, what you thought of the secret society down in the comments. As I said at the start of the video, there's probably things I missed out on or that you think were more important than I did, things like that. So let me know your thoughts in the comments and yeah, it'd be cool to chat to you down there. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Make sure if you want to see more of our content that you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Also check out the video in the box below where we look at another of these secret societies. Thank you for watching. My name is Alex and I will see you in another video soon.